Hello friends, this is Praveen and today I am here with a chapter light. There are five types of sense organs. One of them is the vision or vision or the sight. The sight is one of the most important senses among all the following. Why do we see? The seeing or the seeing is possible because of light. Light is a form of energy and that we are going to learn today about the light. First, there was an old person. He said that when a, a light moves away from our eyes and hits the surface and comes back, we see the object. But he tried to make a law, but he for, uh, forget about his common sense. If this is a situation, then why could not we see in the dark? So the real answer is the light from our body hits the surface and comes to our eyes then we see the object so in previous grades that is sixth and seventh you have learned about the sources of lights what are the sources of lights sources of the lights are the sources or the objects which produce their light there are major two types of the sources one is luminous and one is non-luminous luminous objects are the objects which produce their own light just like examples of these include sun, stars, firefly, bulb. And these luminous objects are also classified into two types. These are natural and artificial. Natural includes sun, firefly, uh, stars, etc. And artificial includes bulb, tube light, etc. And the non-luminous objects are the objects which do not produce their own light. But uh, we see them because the light has reflect from it or we tends to see on uh, uh, know that uh, the it is shining or it is giving their own light but it is not giving your own light it has been reflecting from the uh, surface examples of these are moon and the mirrors and the objects we see around now light is a traveler light travels from the one place to another it could either go straight or one go zigzag method so how does the light travel? So we are going to learn about that. That is called the rectilinear propagation of light. Here the rectilinear means the straight line motion. So the light always travels in a straight line. How do I prove to you that light always travels in a straight line? You can simply take the three cards and arrange in a sequence and put a hole that you can see, uh, see through, other the, um, through another end. So if you see the successfully now lit a candle there and see from the another side you can see the candle so means that light from the candle is uh, coming straight through your eyes so and if you slightly uh, remove the second um, card then you will not able to see the candle because light could not bend and come through your eyes or you can do a simple activity take a straw first make it uh, straight and see uh, through it you will see the candle and if you bend it you will no more see the candle so this uh, activate prove this activity proves that the light always moves in a straight line so if there is object the light would move so what this object can do the object can let the light go through it either absorb light or either make it light come here and go in another direction so first the we will learn about the materials that allow the light to uh, flow through them easily or let the light pass through them so there are major three types of the objects which are transparent translucent and the opaque objects first the material one which allows all the light to pass through them they are lenient that means they allow all the light so you all can pass through it so this is called a transparent so the examples of the transparent are glass and air it allows all the light to pass through them but uh, the second type of material is the which is opposite of transparent which do not uh, let the any light to pass through them so this is a uh, material and a light would cut uh, it would say no you can't pass through it so what would happen it would uh, the light would not pass through it and these types of materials are, are called opaque materials but there are some more materials just like the Paper, uh, butter papers and which you can see partially through it but not completely and uh, it is not blocking all the lights but it block, uh, blocking some light only 
so what you will call that type of material that type of material is called the translucent materials this type of materials allow only some light to pass through them and some do not let examples of these are butter paper now let's learn about the reflection of light as we know that if uh, uh, the light is going through it it could either go through it either absorb and either reflect so now the topic is reflection of light what is the reflection of light a reflection of light is simply nothing but when a li light uh, light comes it hits the surface and goes away so why this is possible um, actually so we will learn in the deeply so what actually is the reflection the light ray falls on a surface and a part of a bounce back into the medium it came from this phenomena is called reflection of light so this is a material and this is medium two and this is the uh, this is medium one so what happens if the light ray comes and it bounces back so means it goes back with that it do not enter the another medium so bounces back in the same medium so it is coming in the medium one and bounces back in the again the medium one so this is the reflection so we learn about in the practically in the propagation of the light that light always moves in a straight line light always moves in a straight line then why this is the light bend the rectilinear pro propagation of the light says that the, the light would not bend until uh, something is meddled with it so here the material is meddling with it so it is not going in the same um, it is not moving in a straight line so um, now let's learn about the some of the terms related to reflection of light so let's this be the point o b and this be the a so now this is the light ray coming and this is the light ray going so what is the name of the light that is coming so that is um, called the incident ray this is called the this is called the incident ray incident ray is coming and then going the going ray that means reflect it is reflecting so this ray is called the reflecting ray and the point in which the light has been incident or uh, is called the incident ray uh, incident point and in the where the point is been reflecting is the called the reflecting point and this happens to be only this point so the point of the point of incidence is the same as the point of reflection point of reflection and if you draw a perpendicular here that means the 90 degree so that uh, this now uh, 90 degree is called the normal so why this uh, it is called normal that we will see um, later and the angle formed between the normal and the incident ray is the called the angle of angle of incident this is denoted by the i so i is the angle of incident and the angle formed by the normal and the reflected ray is called the angle of reflection angle of reflection now uh, let's learn about the two different types of the reflection there are major two types of the reflection these are it are regular and diffused so what do you mean by regular and diffused regular means it uh, all the lines are following the same path and uh, diffuse means they are not following just like uh, uh, this is the example this is a regular surface um, that means it is smooth so what happens in a smooth surface is that uh, when a beam of light comes so it is a parallel beam of light so it would always 
be parallel after reflection so it would be always be parallel after reflection also so this type of rays are called the reflected rays so why these are uh, why these are um, parallel uh, um, regular reflection and what is the uh, diffuse reflection diffuse reflection is a surface where the light beam of light comes but it all goes in a random direction direction they do not have a fixed path so what is why uh, the regular uh, reflection and why the diffuse reflection so the regular diff uh, when you will see the surface of the material from which the light is incident and reflected the in the regular reflection and the, you will see that the surface is very smooth uh, when you will go at its core you will see some of these uh, huge valleys and uh, the mountains but uh, at a minute level it should be the very uh, it should have a very small um, difference so this forms the smooth surface and when it is uh, there are larger shafts and valleys uh, means that uh, the when the light would ref uh, come here it would reflect in that direction reflect this is caused due to the uh, uh, rough uh, uh, surface and this is called by the smooth so this is also called the uh, rough uh, uh, reflection and this is also called the smooth deflect, uh, reflection now so now we learn about the laws of reflection laws of reflection so first law is that we learn about the this is the normal this is the this is now the incidentary and this is the reflectory so what is the first law says that the incidentary the normal and the this is the normal this is an reflected ray and this is an NC incident ray. So the incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray would always be in a plane. So the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal all lies in the same plane. So why it's true? Because in the the light there is no uh, spin bowling. Just like uh, in the cricket when a ball comes here and it could turn here. But in the light it would ball will uh, if it's bouncing it would go in the same direction. So this is the first law of the refle uh, reflection and the second law states that uh, angle formed by the this is the normal this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray. So the angle formed by the a normal and the incident ray that is this angle we denote it as a i and the angle formed by the normal and the reflected ray which you denote as a r are always equal these always are always equal so r um, angle r is equals to angle i so from which uh, these two angles would be always equal because this is 90 minus i and this is 90 minus uh, r we were left with a where i and r are equal so this angle and this angles are always equal so when we will sum the this angle and this angle we will get the 90 deg uh, 90 degree because the normal is uh, perpendicular to it so now we are talking lots of about this but why they always the angle of r is equals to angle of incident that is angle of reflection is equals to angle of uh, incident this can be explained with a uh, uh, Fermat's principle of the least time. So, according to this principle, the light is in hurry. So, means this can be uh, easily understood with the example of a crow and a rat. So, here are the two poles, and here is a ground. So, a crow is sitting, these poles are at the same height. Here is a crow sitting. So, here is crow. And here is its next. So that is crow's next. 
and here is a mouse running between them uh, the, so here is a rat that is mouse running from the pole a to pole b so how at what time when the uh, the where should be the position of the rat so that uh, it takes uh, captures the rat and goes to the its nest with the least time so to solve this question we have to first make this pole upside down so with the same idea this is a now the crows next so it would simply take the straight line between them so it is a straight line between them so but it is we are imagined to be here so but it is actually the crows nest would be here so it has to captured at this point and goes at this so when uh, the crow does that that is uh, that is the same that a light do always that so when a light do this this always says that this is a normal perpendicular the angle formed by the uh, this on uh, that is incident and uh, is uh, the angle of incidence is the angle of reflection is always true so this is how uh, we can explain this so now let's move to the now we are going to learn about the images how is an image formed or how do we see just like my eyes is seeing that somebody is standing there how i notice that is standing there in the minor brain it to i will consume it as a the image so how is an image actually formed so when the two parallel beams uh, para light goes it meets at a point we see that uh, the light is formed or an image is formed so when the beam uh, when the two light rays meet the image is formed there are two types of uh, images which is real and virtual real image in which as the word suggests the uh, two rays or the rays actually meet so that is called the real images so when this real image is formed is always forms an erect this one uh, this uh, always image would be always an uh, real uh, the uh, this uh, if, uh, if a real image is formed the uh, image would be always be inverted so our eyes forms a real image because we see a real uh, image so why do not we see the uh, image form inverted that is because of our mind our brain the brain converts this uh, uh, inverted image and make it uh, upside down and reverse it to form our a straight image and the second type of image form is the virtual image in the virtual image the rays or the uh, two rays are not actually meeting but it seems that it is meeting at uh, into some point of life uh, life it has been originated there or it has been meeting there so this is called the virtual image and the virtual images are always erect images and the, the real images can be captured on a screen and the virtual images can't be captured on a screen these are the two types of images these are real and virtual images now let's learn about the plane mirror so what is a plane mirror a plane mirror is a very smooth surface and from its back is covered with a mercury and it's um, covered with a mercury and its uh, shiny surface is covered with a silver coat so we can see the uh, so it is so smooth that all the light um, come uh, hitting that surface always reflect back but some amount of them it uh, let it pass some amount it let uh, absorb it but uh, these uh, absorption and uh, letting the light pass through them are very little so how does a a uh, plane mirror forms an image that we are going to learn so here is a plane mirror and it's a smooth surface and its back coating is covered with a mercury so this is a mirror here and this is a object so this point acts as an object so what will happen it will send the two beam of light 
so he could not it could not set a parallel beam of light so it would always send a not a converging light it would always send a, the diverging diverge means to the it would never meet but uh, then this would be reflected and it follows the uh, uh, laws of reflection and it would go like that way so this do not actually meets but what is the observer so here is an observer that is observer and he is seeing that uh, these lights are coming so he pretends that these lights must be uh, act, um, at here must be here so this so it is actually not meeting but it's pretending to meet so this is a virtual image so virtual image the virtual image is always the uh, erect image so erect image this can uh, we learn that this can't be taken on the screen so the plane mirror always forms the virtual and erect image so it forms the virtual and erect images now so we see that the distance here and here distances are the same so here the di object distance that is object and distance and this is the object distance is equals to the image distance and have you ever um, the size of the objects uh, remains the same at the both time because uh, this diverging the rays are um, the diverging more uh, they are diverging at the same rate but they are not diverging the more so the image of uh, the size width of the image would be remain the same so same size the same size object and image and have you ever seen if you raise uh, in the mirror if you raise your right hand you will notice that your left hand is raised so uh, if you just like here this is uh, you have placed a mirror here and if you light a uh, right uh, late like that way here so what would it would be like it would be like like here it would be see like something that so why this is for, uh, happening because this is called the left right uh, uh, left right um, or uh, inversion or the lateral inversion so it's plane mirror under undergo lateral so means it is uh, creating the left to the right and right uh, creating to the left so this is a uh, the uh, the plane mirror undergoes a lateral inversion it goes uh, under the lateral inversion so have you ever seen the uh, the word in the ambulance written the in the reverse method uh, way so that a car or a vehicle moving in the front can see when it would see through its mirror it would see that ambulance is written in the correct method so here that's why uh, they could give them a side and move forward a mirror do something more magical when not only one mirror is introduced when two mirrors are introduced this just like a two mirror is introduced to it it forms the multiple images so we are going to learn about the multiple we are going to learn about the multiple images when you visit a barber shop you have ever noticed that one mirror is placed in the front and one mirror is placed in the back so when you see through it you see the infinity object so this is because of the multiple images so if um, there are two mirrors and uh, two or more mirrors and you are uh, only one object is placed here we see multiple objects so how we can calculate that uh, how much images are formed in the when it's parallel it's zero or infinity uh, and when it's uh, different how we can calculate the formula says that uh, 
the this and let the this angle be the uh, angle x so let this angle be the angle x and so what to do this is total 360 360 is there and 360 divided by x so means that would be the different types of the uh, can be formed images can be formed and minus these x to get the total number of images formed because one is the object so the formula is 360 divided by the no, that is degree degree formed by the form by two mirrors and uh, we get the answer then we subtract uh, one from it because one is the object so one is the object and uh, in the odd number uh, this is the for the odd number and even that is 360 divided by the degree that is the x here so this is how we can calculate the images formed by that so what are the uses of the plane mirrors um, you can see it has many uses sometimes in the vehicles and that all but there are special types of mirrors used that we will learn about later so first of the uses of this is a periscope have you ever seen like that structure ever here um, so what happens this is the from here you look uh, from this side you look uh, and to see this uh, sidewards it is seen from the side so what happens it has a 45 degree mirrors on it so when you look at here it uh, forms the uh, it moves to here forming at a 90 degree so your vision is going from here to here and here is again a mirror and it's make the light going direct direct direction so you see the object which is not in the front of you but that is in the side of you that uh, can, uh, this is the function of the this type of instrument is called the periscope this type of image uh, is called the periscope this is used for, for the scientists and uh, detectives and the, the another use of the multiple reflections of uh, is the carillo scope in which you take the some amount of mirrors that and place it in a place um, all in the round shape or uh, creating in a close figure so it is uh, you create a close figure with it and you put uh, some materials or same thing that you want to uh, something uh, bangles or something decorations inside this and you see from the another side so this is the you have you had you have put the some decoration things and in this side you are seeing so you will see a pattern formed by the candlescope uh, which is a very unique figure these are the uh, used for the decorations in the parties and different things these are the uses of the plane mirrors friends this was my part first of the chapter light to continue watching subscribe to the channel and if you like this uh, video give it a like and at the last thanks for watching